In this video, we will discuss binary search tree. So far, we have discussed binary trees, the tree traversals, and how we can construct trees from the given traversals. Now, binary search tree is a category of a binary tree with some special properties. Let's see what is a binary search tree. So, BST, which is a short form for the binary search tree, is a binary tree with the following properties. So, left subtree of a node contains nodes which have values less than the node and right subtree contains nodes which has values greater than the node and the left and the right subtree must also be a BST. So this is an example of a binary search tree. So the first property says that the left subtree of a node should have values less than the node. So for the node 11 this is the left subtree. So the values here are 7, 4, 1, 9 and 10. So these are less than 11. Second property says right subtree should have values greater than the node. So the right subtree contains nodes which are 15, 12, 25 and 20. So all of these are greater than 11. And then the last property says left and right subtree must also be a BST. So that means for all the nodes, this property should hold true. So let's consider this node 7. So the nodes which are on the left of 7, so 4 and 1, these are less than 7. And the right subtree 9 is greater than 7 and 10 is also greater than 7. If we consider this tree 4 and 1, so we see here 1 is less than 4. So the property that the left should be less than the node and the right should be greater than the node. So this should hold for each node of the tree. So we can generalize it by saying that the key in the left subtree should be less than the node and the right subtree should be greater than the node. So if this is the node and this is the left subtree and this is the right subtree. So we can say that the left subtree should be less than node and right subtree should be greater than node and this should hold for each node of the tree. So if these properties are satisfied then that binary tree can be said as BST or a binary search tree. Now once we have understood what is binary search tree let's understand what are the advantages of a binary search tree over a binary tree. So in a binary search tree searching is very efficient. So let's say we have to search whether node 9 is present in the tree. So how the search operation works is we first compare the value that we have to search with the root node. So 9 is less than 11. So that means it would come in the left subtree. So we go to the left tree. Now we compare with 7. So 9 is greater than 7. So that means 9 would be present in the right subtree. So we come to the right and then we check the root node is equal to the value that we want to search. So we have obtained the value that we were searching. So at each step we are basically either going to the left or to the right. So we can say that we have reduced our search space by n by 2 at every step. So this greatly reduces our search complexity. Now here one problem can arise if the tree is not balanced. So if the tree is let's say squid then the search operation is not efficient because all the nodes are in a single line. So we have to make sure that the tree that we create is height balanced or is a balanced tree. So if the tree is balanced then the searching operation will be very efficient. So we'll let us see in the subsequent videos how we can create a balanced binary tree but for now we can assume that a searching operation is quite efficient in a binary search tree. And the second advantage is that the sorted order of the tree is stored in the in order traversal. So we have seen in the previous videos that in order traversal is left, root and right. So if you have any doubts on how the in order traversal works, I will link a video in the top right corner. You can refer to that. So the in order traversal of this tree is will start from the leftmost node. So it will be 1, 4, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 20 and 25. So this is the in order traversal of this given BST. So if we notice here that this order is sorted. So this property is there for the BST that the in order traversal gives us the sorted order. 
So due to these two advantages, it makes sense to study BST and this is one of the important topics for the interviews. Now once you have understood what is BST and why do we need to study it, let's see if we are given some set of data how we can create a BST. So we'll start with the construction of a binary search tree. So the structure of the tree node remains the same as you have studied in the binary tree. So before studying the binary search tree, you should be familiar with the binary tree concepts. I've made many videos on binary tree which are mentioned in the description. You can have a look at them if you have any doubts on how the binary tree works. So the tree structure remains the same. We have an integer val and two left and right pointers. So we are given this set of numbers and we have to create a binary search tree from them. Let's see the algorithm for this. So we have this function insert which takes two parameters, a node of the tree and the integer val. So basically we'll iterate this array and for each element in the input array, we'll call the insert function. And for the first call to the insert function, this root will be null because we have not created the tree. So the initially the root will be null. After we insert the first node, then we'll assign the root node. So for the first call to the insert function, the node is null and the val is 11. We check if node is null, then we create a new tree node of value 11. So initially both the left and the right pointers are pointing to null. Then we come to 7. So now the node is pointing to 11 and the val is 7. We check if node is null, then we check if 7 is less than 11. So this is true. So we call this insert function with the left of node which is null and the val is 7. So now node is null and the value is 7. We check if node is null then we create a new tree node of value 7. Then we return this node. So this will be assigned to the left of 11 because we call this insert function from this point. So this seventh node will become the left of 11. So we'll join this link. So now the next node is 9. So now the node is pointing to 11 and the val is 9. We check if node is null. Then we check if 9 is less than 11. So this is true. So now we go to the left of 11 and we call this function insert for node 7 and the val 9. We check if node is null. Then we check if 9 is less than 7. So this is false. We come to the else part and then we call this insert function for the right of 7. So this insert function is called for node null. When the node is null, we create a new tree node of value 9. So this will be linked to the right of 7. So here we can see that when a new node comes which is less than the node, then we go to the left. And if the new node is greater, then we go to the right of the node. So similarly, if now we check for 4, so 4 is less than 11, so we go to the left of 11. Now 4 is less than 7, so we go to the left of 7 and we create a new tree node for 4 to the left of 7. Then we check the next node which is 15. We compare 15 with 11, so 15 is greater, so we go to the right of 11 and we create a new tree node 15 and we will link this. Then the next node is 12. So 12 is greater than 11. So we come to 15. 12 is less than 15. So we come to the left of 15 and we create a new node 12 and we will link this. Then the next node is 1. So 1 is less than 11. We come to 7. 1 is less than 7. We come to 4. And 1 is less than 4. So we create 1 to the left of 4. Then the next node is 10. 10 is less than 11. So we come to the left. It is greater than 7. Traverse to the right. It is greater than 9. So we create a new tree node to the right of 9. Next node is 25. So 25 is greater than 11. We traverse to the right. It is greater than 15. So we create a new tree node to the right of 15 and we link it. Next node is 20. So 20 is greater than 11, we traverse to the right. It is greater than 15, we traverse to the right. And it is less than 25. So we come to the left of 25 and we create a node 20. 
So this is our binary search tree that we have created from this given set of numbers. The time complexity of inserting a node in the binary search tree is equal to order of h where h is the height of the tree. The worst case complexity can be order of n because the tree can be squared. So where the h will be equal to the number of nodes. But the average complexity is order of h where h is the height of the tree. Now once we have constructed the tree, let's see how we can search a particular node in the tree. Let's say we're given this binary search tree and we have to find these values whether they are present in the tree or not. Let's start with the first search value which is 4. So in the first step we check if node is null. 11 is null, this is false. Then we check if val is equal to the node value. So this is false. Then we check if 4 is less than 11. So this is true. So we proceed to the left node. Here we again check if 7 is equal to null. So this is false. We check if 4 is equal to 7. So this is false. We check if 4 is less than 7. So this is true. So we proceed to the left. At 4, we check if 4 is equal to null. This is false. We check if 4 is equal to 4. So this is true. So that means the value 4 is present in the tree. So we return true. Now let's check the next value which is 10. In the first step we check if 11 is equal to null. This is false. Then we check if 10 is equal to 11. This is false. We check if 10 is less than 11. This is true. So we proceed to the left. Then we check if 7 is equal to null. This is false. Then we check if 10 is equal to 7. This is false. We check if 10 is less than 7. This is false. So we go to the right subtree. We reach 9. Now we check if 9 is equal to null. This is false. We check if 10 is equal to 9. This is false. We check if 10 is less than 9. This is false. So we proceed to the right subtree. Then here we check if 10 is equal to null. This is false. We check if 10 is equal to 10. So this is true. So we have found the node 10 in the tree. So this function returns true. Now let's check the value 16 if it is present in the tree or not. We first check if the node that we are at is null or not. So this is false. We check the key if it is equal to the node. This is false. We check if the key is less than the node. This is false. So we go to the right node. Then we check if the node is equal to null, this is false. We check if the value that we find is equal to the node, this is false. We check the value is less than the node, this is false. So we go to the right subtree. Then we check if the node that we are at is null, this is false. We check the value that we want is equal to the node, this is false. Then we check the value that we want is less than the node, so this is true. So we go to the left tree. Then we check the node is equal to null. This is false. We check if the key that we want is equal to the node. This is false. We check if the key is less than the node. So this is true. So we proceed to the left. So now the left node is null. We check if the node that we are at is equal to null. So this is null. So we return false. So this means the value 16 is not present in the tree. So we can see the pseudocode also. So if the node is null, that means we have traversed the tree and the node is not found. So we have to return false. If the node we reach is equal to the value that we want to find, that means we have found the value in the tree. So we can return true. Then the next two lines are simple recursive calls. If the value is less than the node, then we go to the left subtree. If the value is greater, then we go to the right subtree. So at each step, we are potentially reducing our search space in half. So this would also depend if the tree is balanced or not. So the time complexity in the search is order of h where h is the height of the tree. The worst case complexity is order of n which would be in the case of a squid tree if the tree is not height balanced and all the nodes are aligned in one direction.
but in the average case the time complexity is order of h now once we have understood how we can create a tree and we can search the nodes let's have a look at the implementation all the source code that i'll be showing is available in my github repository link of that is available here and as well as in the description now let's have a look at the code so in the main function i've created this vector in which i have all these numbers then i create a variable root of type tree node which i initialize with null so this will be the root of the bst that we'll create then i traverse this vector and for each element of the vector i call this insert function in the first call if the root is null i initialize the root with the return value of the insert function in the insert function i check if the root is null then i create a new tree node if the value is less than the root then i go to the left subtree if the value is greater then i go to the right subtree so after this for loop ends the bst will be created to print the bst i am doing the in order traversal so this will give me the sorted order then after printing this traversal i am searching these four values in the tree so first i search value 4 in the tree so i call the search function with the root and the value to be searched in the search function i check if the root is null so that means we have traversed the tree and we have not found the value so we return false if the value of the node is equal to the value that we want to find then i return true if the value is less then i go in the left subtree otherwise i go in the right subtree now let's see the output of this program so these were the numbers from which bst is created so the in order traversal gives me the sorted order then i check if these values are present in the bst so 4 is present so it returns 1 which means true 10 is also present 12 is also present 16 is not present so we return 0 which is false so that was all for this video if you have any doubts or suggestions please leave in the comment section below if you like my content please do like share and subscribe to my channel it really motivates me to make more such content and until next time this is sandeep thapar signing off